I'm Jeremy Mickel. I run Mickel and Elliot Ace Tech Foundry and Design Studio. And this is Leanne Pinas, the Senior Director of Branding at Adidas. We've been working together on a number of projects over the last few years, and we're excited to share a few of them with you here today. So I won't keep you waiting. The title of our talk is Adidas Variable Fonts, and so we'll give you a preview. Uh, this is our newest project, which is Autonoia Pro Variable. It's got a wide range of weights and widths. And, uh, Got the whole story for you, but first we'll show you a little of Adidas history. Thanks, Chairman. So uh, I'll give you a quick little brand history. Uh, the brand got started in 1930 in Germany, Bavaria area, uh, and uh, that's the original factory. That is the person that started it. It was Adi Dossler. So we're in Europe, so it is Adi Das. I grew up in the States. I go with Adidas, but you know, it's the way it is. Uh, and that was one of the first uh, designs. Uh, the logo. And it evolved over the years. Uh, a lot of different little fluctuations over time. Uh, and then the newer logos that you'd be more familiar with, uh, like the trefoil, uh, which these guys wore. Uh, this is how I first learned about the brand uh, in the 80s. Uh, it was one of many moments in our brand history where we got appropriated by street culture and uh, what was once a sports shoe, like the basketball shoe that was the superstar became an icon of streetwear. Track suits that were made for athletes became the, the icon of, uh, of hip hop at the time. Um, and that's a little bit of brand history. Um, this is some other projects that I've been doing over the years. Probably there are a few designers in here that have actually worked with me on a few of these. Uh, these are more representative of some pretty seasonal uh, visuals and ideas, more connected to uh, concepts that didn't last as long. Uh, and we're going to go over something that is much more about the foundation uh, of typography for the brand. So in 2011, the ad agency Sidley worked with John Carl's Kesselson to create Autonomia, the first version of the brand typeface based on the Adidas logo. It was a hugely influential and successful campaign. The font was made in lowercase only, and that's how they used it uh, very prominently through all of their communication materials in three ways. So in 2014, Leon and I started on a project to develop the whole uh, typeface into a super family with caps, italics, condensed, new weights, and new languages. And we would call the font Autonoia Pro to distinguish it from its predecessor. So I really love type, custom type because it's a collaboration with the client. You get to work um, in, within their specific circumstances, use their brand assets, and take that as inspiration. So in this case, we look to the Adidas primary word mark as uh, the building blocks for our typeface. It's obviously got a very pure geometry. There's an engineered simplicity to it. And as you notice, it's completely monoweighted. There's no you know, evidence of fitting the joints at all. And that was something that, again and again, became very important um, in all of the custom fonts that we did. I remember Leon saying that he wanted the O to just feel like a washer, like this piece of steel that was just presented plainly. So the obvious references for these fonts are the geometric stands that we all know, Futura, Airbar, and Mosaic Grotesque. And we really use the geometry to inform all the proportions of the fonts. Again, always monoweighted throughout all of the characters. <coughs> So here's the initial four weights that we did, focusing on the caps. And again, you know, with the Run DMC example, we really looked to the 70s, 80s nostalgia for inspiration. So there's a heavy dose of avant-garde uh, in this typeface as well. The italic is fairly adventurous with a 16 degree angle. Uh, and we also thought that that added this element of acceleration, uh, which was a metaphor for sport, and the human quality in its imperfections. As many of you know, it can be pretty tri tricky to italicize a monoweighted circle when so many feel around. Taking a closer look at some of these characters, there are some intentional inconsistencies. And this is consistent with you know, Futura, which obviously has a different C, but there are inconsistencies in the terminals. So we've got this open C and G, but then there's a closed S. It's intentionally odd in a few places. 
including the R, which, you know, in the era of Gotham, most designers would choose the R on the left, but we liked this nod to Futura. It felt more like sport. And these are all of the numbers that are in each of these styles of Adenoia Pro. And it's not indecision. There's really a function for having all of these. We needed this range of options for all the different jersey numbers, all of the different product applications. There are, I don't know, literally thousands of, of activations for the brand with all of the different partners around the world, you know, different sports teams, organizations. So these exercises are not theoretical. They're actually getting used in all of the products. When it came time to make the condense, we tried a few different approaches. But I feel that when you have a geometric font and you squish the curves, you condense those curves, it loses all of the energy. So the breakthrough for us was to treat it like a pill where the uh, circles are pulling apart. And that's how we created the, um, the condensed forms of the rounds. This pill construction became very fortuitous when we got to the uh, variable font of Pro, which we'll show you in a little bit. Just a couple other aspects of Autonoia Pro. I'm going to skip one. Uh, we added some extremes with a, a thin and an ultra black, with a shout out to Ralph Simmons since we're here in Antwerp. And we also did a, a greet by Ksenia Sanskaya and a Cyrillic by Ilya Ruderman, who's here today. But maybe the defining characteristic in Autonoia Pro are the massive set of ligatures. Again, you can see the Herbubaum influence here. Uh, but Leon talked to me about using these ligatures as this metaphor for compression. We want this athletic sensibility. And so we use the badge of sport, this mountain three stripe icon, or the logo for Adidas on the left, uh, as this mechanism for slicing into adjacent glyphs when there's a strong diagonal. So one example, we've got this setting of Germany. Nice, but maybe a little bit plain if you're going to put it on a t-shirt or you know, a jacket. By using the ligatures or stackatures, as Frank Center once um, corrected me, uh, it makes it feel more like lettering. So it also allows for fine tuning, where you can have this five character ligature, R, M, A, and Y, because these are actually independent glyphs. And as I mentioned, there are a lot of them. There are almost 300 combinations, including our very uh, lovable quirky O's. Uh, we did italics, all weights. We did condensed, again, all weights. And it was great, but maybe I have one regret that by making these, these individual glyphs, it got a little confusing for designers <coughs> when they went to the glyph palette. And they're trying to figure out which H goes with the bright leaning A. You know, by using the OpenType palette, you can turn these things on, but it became a little bit confusing for designers. Um, but they figured it out eventually, right now. Eventually. Uh, with a little bit of uh, hand-holding. Um, so what you see, is this is kind of foundational work that we had done. Uh, when I took over uh, branding uh, in 2014, uh, the intent was to really remaster the brand. And this is one of the first campaigns that really came out representative of the new look of the brand, which has kind of catapulted us uh, forward into the market uh, up until today. And you can see the, the first usage of the, uh, the ligatures, uh, which is really great. And this is a really great example. I mean, we do thousands and thousands and thousands of these t-shirts for teams at professional levels and leagues and the Olympics and the World Cup and all number of uh, opportunities around the world. Um, and it's really incredible, and it allows the designers quite a robust toolbox to play from. And if you're an apparel designer and you're not too uh, fluent in the realm of typography, you have available to you uh, a really quick manner to make something look uh, like custom lettering. An example from the Olympics. Um, and as well, this really became a foundational element. This is probably what the brand looked like beforehand, our look of iconography and typography, and it was kind of all over the map, uh, and really wanted to bring it back to our modernist origins. Um, you know, the Bauhaus uh, began not too far away from where our brand began at the same time period, um, and really wanted to use uh, the geometry that we were creating in the typefaces as the baseline geometry for everything. So custom uh, logos and our iconography, and we do 60,000 products around the world every year. Many of those have a name. That name is on the product. Uh, we're kind of traditional about putting the name of the shoe on the shoe. 
way to humanize it. Um, so you got to write a lot of different names in a lot of different languages, uh, and very helpful. Um, I'll talk a little bit about this, right? Um, sport is uh, really the execution of identity and culture. Um, and it's so much more than just the name of the team. It's the name of the community. It's the idea that represents them. Uh, and as this has evolved over the years, the look of sport typography is really something out of utility. So these were you know, uh, letter forms and geometries cut out of actual material. It's a lot quicker to cut a straight angle without any curves than it is to cut a curve out of twill or canvas or felt. Um, so moving on from kind of the early 1900s through the middle, and then even up until today in our more modern kind of look, it's a visual language that is synonymous to sport. It's something that's been appropriated into streetwear, into high fashion, uh, because it's just a universal, uh, universal language of sport. So we need a typeface for that. Yeah. So uh, as long as Lena and I have been working together, he's been talking about building a tool to fill any space with typography. So once the variable font format was announced, uh, we saw that as an opportunity to really dive in. The octagonal, the sport athletic sans felt like the right first step for us. First of all, it has this sports influence, and then we thought it would probably be easier without the curves to condense these forms to extend them. This was a first draft of what come to be known as Adenoia Chop, the second in the Adenoia families. And one of the first things that we did was look at how can we bring that sports compression to this design as well. By chopping or slicing the glyphs on these diagonals, we're able to reduce the contrast a little bit, bring everything a little bit closer, and then we also added these 45 degree faceting, which further reduces the contrast and rewards you at large sizes. It gives you this visual entry that you wouldn't see when it's used small, but just makes it that much more interesting at larger sizes. We developed the same weight range for CHOP as PRO, um, but there's a difference in terms of the proportions. So PRO has a more classical proportion, the, the O, the C, the G are wide and proud. The boxy characters like EFL are a bit narrower. With CHOP, it has a more modern proportion where everything is a bit more even and it's slightly narrower overall by default. So going into the variable, I did a draft of this. I showed him this is what we could do for going very narrow. This is, you said you wanted wide, let's go pretty wide. And he said, you know, I love the condensed, the default looks great, but we need to go a whole lot wider, like two or three times wider. So that's what we did. And it turned out great. We built up a full range of styles, starting at the poles, the thinnest and the heaviest weights, the thinnest and or the narrowest and the widest styles. And then worked backwards from there, or worked backwards from the middle, you know, interpolating wherever we could. You know, one one particular uh, area area that needed additional help were the diagonals. You would think you could draw an A here and draw an A here that you like and get a great result in the middle, but everything always goes a little pear shaped. And so this is 2017. Variable fonts were out, but only really available in browsers. Not a great way to design, um, you know, design applications. So we worked with the designer developer Kenneth Ormandy, who's here as well, uh, to create a custom plugin for ideas to use in Illustrator and in design to approximate the variable experience in these Adobe applications. We created this third-party installer. We used a third-party installer to hide the fonts in a hidden folder to trick Illustrator and in design into recognizing the variable fonts. It didn't go so well. Illustrator called to a stall, and we got the beach ball when you even tried to edit a text box in InDesign. The problem was, in order to give Adidas the range of weights and widths that they needed, in order for these steps to be meaningful, we installed around 6,000 fonts in this temporary folder, and it just broke everything. So our head in our hands, we you know went back to the drawing board, but the saving grace was actually one year ago, A-Type by 2017 in Montreal, we got word that Illustrator 2018 was going to support variable fonts natively. So we got involved in the beta program and now started to develop the true variable font. As many 
many of you may know, it's a finicky format. Um, there's a lot more required for it than would be for normal inter interpolation. A single stray anchor can derail the entire font. All 24 masters have to have the exact same number of printing pairs. I did a lot of posting on forums to try and get more information about this you know, brand new format. And fortunately, there were some really generous developers and font naked font tools who answered my questions and set me on the right path to you know, develop something that would interpolate correctly in app. So we finally resolved all the issues. We had a full character set. As you can see, there's still lots of alt numerals. We still need those. And we had the full range of widths and weights. Uh, now we could really fill any space with typography. Leon had hinted that chop was really just the first of the variable fonts, and so we started on what would become pro variable, what I showed you at the beginning. Now, narrowing and widening rectangles is fairly easy. You don't have curves to worry about. Um, but when it came to pro, uh, we had to think about, OK, what's the logic between regular and condensed? How can we go even narrower, and how can we go even wider? For the narrowest, it was actually fairly straightforward. We just pulled those pills apart a bit further. And we figured if you can pull the pills apart for narrow, why don't we just pull, pull, pull the pills apart horizontally for wide? Some other issues that we ran into, when you go super wide, your diagonals get a bit unwieldy. They become so high contrast and so wide in order to you know, have the same apparent width that we decided we needed to chop those a little bit as well, although not quite as much as we did with chop because we wanted to maintain the even more unweighted aspect of pro. We still have our avant-garde influence, all of the you know, left and right leaning AM VWs, and we used the same method to fill out the masters. Since it was the second time through, we thought it would be a lot easier. Everything interpolated great this time with a couple of infuriating exceptions. These insidious little distortions with no rhyme or reason, I would drag the, you know, to the, the bar in Illustrator, and they would come and go. They would just show up randomly. Uh, it made no sense. But you know, basically, it didn't like where my start points were. I knew deep down what the problem was, but I was banging my head against the wall trying to figure out how to do it without, or how to resolve it, without having to you know, start over on the design. So this is a very common production trick in type design. It's usually not a problem to have these points on top of each other. And it's really the only way to interpolate between you know, a circle and a pill shape. So these long verticals in the pill have to condense down to you know, an overlapping point for the circle. The same is true with the super wide version. Then we've got these long horizontals. In the end, after banging my head against the wall, uh, I did finally get it to work. And Adita says, uh, Van hinted, that's short for Adi Dossler. And now we went back to Kenneth and wanted to make a true variable plugin. So Illustrator 2018 supports variable fonts natively. It has an interface for it. But it's hidden in the submenu. And we thought it could be just a little bit easier for Adidas designers to use. So we wanted the panel to be persistent, to always be there for you to be able to edit the text fields and um, have some other aspects to aid in design. But this is really the holy grail of design software, the graphic design button. So we've got this fit to width where it will automatically choose the correct width for you and turn just some text into something that feels like design. Go ahead. Um, so we still have the same number of designers in the brand now. So we haven't gotten rid of them yet. Um, but the, the powerful end of this is actually how we're going to use it. Um, and um, we've started to kind of play with it, kind of using it for posters and internal graphics in a way to kind of communicate all this rich kind of design principles and language and internal ideas, you know, bringing it into our newer retail spaces and really filling the space with typography and really being much more grand and epic and bigger. Um, a few uh, examples uh, just from some recent campaigns that you probably maybe had seen around the world during the World Cup. Uh, this was done by the Garza twins. A uh, really beautiful way to just the, the playfulness of the typography, the, the cleanliness of it. It's still very modern and looked uh, very, uh, very lively. 
Uh, and then for another campaign where it's a little bit more prescriptive, a little bit tighter, uh, a little bit more restrained. Um, and then, you know, just kind of used for so many different things. We have so many different platforms and concepts and ideas and, uh, you know, it gets used on just about everything. Um, some new identities. Uh, but this is really where we're going to use the technology of the, the fit to wit uh, that Jeremy was just showing you that Kenneth had done. Um, really incredible. Uh, we're going to be kind of redoing our, our whole locker room, which is basically where coaches go to buy their team's uniforms and apparel and, and you know, whatever they might need. Some of their names are short, some of their names are long, and normally with every uniform and tradition of sport, the name is a little smaller on the front, the number is a little smaller on the front. In football, it's a little bigger. Lacrosse or basketball might be a little smaller. On the back side, it's big. They have shoulder numbers. It's so many different proportions. And the ability to actually have, no matter what the name is, however length, and it still look beautiful and really fill up all available space, it makes a really great, consistent look across an entirety of, uh, of a, a team. And sometimes with schools, you have 26 different sports all with a different look and a different format. Um, so really great way to bring consistency there. Uh, and then just a few more graphics that you might find around campus using the same uh, technology. Uh, and, you know, just really building it in and making it look robust and really built to last. So a lot of timeless details. Excellent. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of talk online. Will anyone actually pay for variable fonts? Will they actually get used in a meaningful way? And I'm here to say that in Adidas, I've found a great client who will commission this work and actually use the fonts in interesting ways. So true to Adidas Lawyer's original vision, we're trying to create timeless aesthetics and new ways that will reach people around the world. I think the future is bright for design, technology, and typography. Thank you.